So, well, hi there. This is another video from me. Today is about electric fence chargers. When I was young, when I grew up, I grew up in an area where many electric fences were. And since I had electronic interest when I was young, as well as I have it today, I played around with them, made spark gaps and had just fun. <laughs> uh, when I got older, I was interested in the circuitries behind these fences. And how do they make it? I mean, they, they have written on them 9 volts, 16 milliamps power consumption and on the output I can make really impressive sparks that are even stronger than, at the time then, my homemade high voltage generator. And uh, when I was uh, a youth, at the age of 11 to 15, 16, I was really into that high voltage stuff, played a lot with ignition coils, flyback transformers and you know it. <laughs> and I, tr I tried to rebuild electric fence chargers and then I really made much research how to build them and I, I, of course I got into transistor circuits later, thyristor circuits, but everything started with relay. My first fence charger had replace, replaceable relay because after a couple of days you had to replace the relay. I could tell many tales about that stuff, but today's video is about electric fence chargers. Let's start with the first version, the very old one, which uses mechanical fence chargers. And the concept is always the same. In, an in a capacitor, uh, electricity and charge get stored, and then over a switch it gets discharged into a transformer. The transformer steps up the voltage and there you can connect your electric fence. The first chargers were mechanical made. I've seen a video of one that uses some kind of wheel with a spring and then when, when the person turned it on the wheel uh, was kind of spinning then it stopped, turned back and spin and turned back and always the same direction. So the transformer seems to have had a, an output for its magnetic field and there, maybe there was a magnet with uh, inverted polarization and every time the transformer got current uh, this spring was loaded or was was pushed or pulled, I don't know, I can't remember it exactly how it worked, but anyway, it was always mechanical, mechanically solved that this wheel was always going like this. And every time it touched the beginning, the uh, transformer produced on its output, it produced high voltage. So there is a mechanical solution that always pulses like one times a second, pulses a switch that discharges the capacitor into a transformer. On the output you have a neon bulb with a resistor that shows it that there is high voltage present and on the input you have a capacitor that is in resonance with the uh, transformer. I've also had a fence charger, that was mine, that used a, um, oh, I can't find the word, uh, mercury, that used a mercury relay and there was a capacitor and a resistor in a metal can and it was on the primary coil from the transformer and since I made too many experiments I popped that one and that was like without, uh, with, it, with it being working I had like 6 to 7 kilovolts and with it being destroyed I had like 1 to 2 kilovolts. We tried to fix it back in time but we couldn't fix it but this is just one, one thing. I also saw a construction with a whip with a marble that was always going like this and this and this and the marble was pulsing a contact then. So they, they were really, really creative back in time with these mechanical solutions. Here is an electric fence charger with pure mechanical solution. At least in theory, I mean, I have a switch and as you can see it's sparking, it shouldn't spark. And this would be mechanical, I do use electronics there. And this is without the resonant capacitor. I try to reproduce the experiment from back in time. So, uh, I'm not meaning the movie, of course. <laughs> so let's have a look at the spark on the output. Come on, at least one spark on camera. Yeah, there was a tiny spark, so as you can see, nothing special going on there. Now I'm adding this resonant capacitor. At least I try to. So now it's added. And you may see it. This spark is no more present, or it's very, very weak. And if you have a look on the output, it not only got much stronger, you can even hear the spark now. But of course, time moved on, technology evolved, and they, they stopped using these mechanical solutions, probably because they have some disadvantages. The relay contacts may burn somewhere and you have to replace the relay and maybe it's not too efficient. I don't know the exact reasons because, as I said, I've seen some really creative solutions there that were very simple and very creative and they were working very well obviously. Uh, 
they moved on and made electronic electric fence chargers. And they replaced the relay with a transistor. In my case, it's a MOSFET, but this is also not really a circuit that you This is just a demonstration circuit. It's much weaker than the uh, circuits from the, the time period, what, what I'm talking about. But before I'm going to show you the spark gaps, we're going to have a little theory lesson. Here is the circuit of the improved uh, version of what they made. So they have still they still have their 5000 microfarad capacitor. For example, this is a 4700 microfarad. Uh, the device I had had a 5000 microfarad, and although it's just 300 microfarads more than this one, and it had less voltage, it was like three times the size of this capacitor. So it's just impressive how technology evolves. Anyway, um, here is the 5000 microfarad capacitor. It still gets discharged over a uh, transformer, but instead of the relay, they are using a transistor. And since this is uh, having high current, it's like a 2N3055 transistor. The oscillator is not using gear. This is just a symbol. It should, should be a gear symbol for mechanic. It's using an integrated circuit or a transistor circuit to drive the transistor. There is a device uh, that I draw in, it's a over voltage protection. Because if there is a feedback pulse from this transformer that is higher than the emitter collector voltage from the transistor, as you may imagine, the transistor will pop. And so they've built in a, a high voltage protection device. It's, it's probably like, I've seen a, a schematic where they just used a big electrolytic capacitor, or, or was it electrolytic? At least a capacitor that could take 100 volts at something in the 20 microfarads range just to prevent these high voltage pulses. And on the output, you have your high voltage pulse for the electric fence again. I haven't drawn in the neon bulb there, but you can also connect your neon bulb to see the pulses. Okay, this is just a really play around circuit and it's by far not as strong as these uh, circuits that I saw. I've seen some pictures of opened electric fence charges from the time period and I saw the big transistor, the, the IC and so far and so on. And so I figured out how they probably worked. Well, as you can see, you can also see some... Uh, you can also see some sparks there, at least sometimes the camera is picking them up. So here you can see them, the sparks, spark gap. And you can also hear it on the audio. So this is pretty much an electric fence charger. You couldn't hear any click, you could not hear clicking voices. Of course, there's no relay, so there's no clicking voice. Everything uh, now with transistors and no mechanical components. So this is still not where we are today. I mean, today I've seen fence chargers at least years ago, I had one uh, that had a display built in that showed you on, on the display, it showed you the ex exact voltage from the electric fence. Uh, I think it even had an LED that told you is, is the fence fine, is the voltage okay, is the charge okay, or is it bad, should you change something? And they are putting really much effort and technology into that. Uh, also, years ago, I saw that they have made an intelligent fence charger, so if there is no animal touching the fence, there's nothing wrong, it's, it's just pulsing very slow. But as soon as the animal is touching the fence, it's increasing the output power, it's making stronger pulses, and also it's uh, it's pulsing faster and, and so far and so on. And if it notices that the animal is no more touching the fence, it's going back to the detection mode again, where it's still producing high voltage on the fence, but just very weak pulses uh, and so far. And that was years ago. I mean, the, the devices got stronger, they got more complex, and. This is just how technology evolved, obviously. So, and I'm going to show you one concept of this evolved technology. Um, and yeah, if I get it hooked up, then you will see it. So this is how they evolved today. This is just a theory circuit. This is not literally the circuit that you will find in a fence charger of two days times. This is just like the theoretical circuit. At least you won't find this transformer in the fence charger of today in the evolved circuits. Okay, here we are now. This is how today's electric fence chargers work, at least the very basic circuit and the cheap ones. Well, I have to say the cheap ones are usually still better than the built by yourself ones because also they have certification. That means if someone gets shocked by your fence uh, and gets in trouble, needs medical assistance or whatever, uh, if you build one by yourself, you are in trouble because you're ca you've caused his health, his or her health issues. But if you use a device that has been bought and you, you do everything properly, the manufacturer will eventually get in trouble and not you. But still, I make these circuits not for electrocuting animals or something like that. As I said, I like animals. I don't want to harm them. This is just the theory how they work. That's interesting. And that's why I make these videos. So, 
Anyway, for today's electric fence chargers, we have uh, still we have the 12 volt supply, then we have an oscillator, probably around 16 kilocycles or so, like a flyback transformer. Then we have one transformer with a 1 to 40 ratio. Uh, here we have, by, by the way, on both we have round about 1 to 100 ratio. The, this inverter steps up the 12 volt supply voltage to around about 400 to 500 volt, which is then stored in one uh, impulse or pulse capacitor. This is not an electrolytic capacitor. You won't find on the high voltage side, you won't find electrolytic because they're having a high inner resistance. They're using like foil capacitors with a very low inner resistance and these capacitors are made for these type of circuits. Then we have an oscillator with a DIAC diode or with a... a um, Neon bulb. I'm sorry. This is the like tenth or so video I make today because I'm not usually not making one video. I'm making a couple of videos and pick the best one. Anyway, um, here's a thyristor and here is the coil. I'm not using this transformer because if you put in 400 volts there, it will fail pretty quick. I'm using a special flyback transformer. This is an AC flyback transformer. It puts out AC. It works very well in my schematic. It puts out like eight kilovolts or so. Anyway, um, here is the ratio. And what you can see, you have a one to 100 here and a one to 20 here. So the ratio has dropped, means you need less turns on the output wire, uh, on the output transformer, means the output transformer will have a lower impedance. So here is the uh, circuit built up on the uh, Left side, you can see my DC DC converter, very cheap, very cheap circuit. It converts the 12 volts into like four to 500 volts. Here is my fill, uh, here is my storage capacitor. Here is the two restore. Here is the diac, or is it a triac? I'm not sure. Uh, here is the trigger diode, and here is this capacitor. How does it work? This one gets charged to four to 500 volts. This one gets charged as well, but only to a few volts via this resistor divider. It gets charged to like 33 volts. If it reaches 33 volts, this diode is getting conductive, tri triggers the thyristor, the thyristor discharges this capacitor into the flyback transformer and we get the high voltage pulse. Both capacitors are empty now and everything starts from the beginning again. Here's the retrofire diode, oh, it's converting AC to DC and it's, it pulses DC to DC, I, I, too much details ain't worth it. <laughs> this is just a quick video. What is a thyristor? A thyristor is like uh, a switch, it has a gate contact and if you Get a, put a small pulse onto gate, it's like a switch that closes. And to open the switch, you either have to add a strong negative uh, polarized pulse on gate, or if the voltage goes too low here, too much, too less current is flowing, it will automatically open again. Okay, I'm going to turn it on, and eventually we'll see some sparks flying away from this alligator clip, since they are a little bit rusty, and although they're obviously making contact, on the high energy that is flowing here, you will see, still see sparks flying away, eventually. Let's turn it on. Oops, sorry, I made a mistake, whoops. I hooked it up the wrong way, so now it should work. Whoops, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite loud, it's quite loud. <laughs> so anyway, let's see some sparks. If the camera is picking them up, they are quite, quite strong, quite bright. <laughs> Nah, the camera ain't pick is not picking them up. Uh, it's it's really an annoyance that the camera is not picking them up. Yeah, in theory you could see sparks and they were quite bright sparks. Um, anyway, so why is this good? Well, here I have a simple drawing. Here I have an electric fence, fence charger. Here is the mount for the fence. Here it's mounted. Here is the wire, here is a flower that, or grass that has grown to the fence, here is the uh, grass or ground. So every centimeter the fence is above ground is like a capacitor, it's like a capacitor between the fence charger's output. And here you can see flower or grass has grown to the fence which is an additional resistor. If you have the old fence chargers that are here with the 1 to 100 ratio, the voltage will drop. Like you have 8 kilovolts without load, connect this fence and it will drop to 5 kilovolts, 4 kilovolts. But if you have a new charger with this less turning, less turns, it has a lower impedance and therefore it will deliver more current. And it just ignores the capacitance and the flower. And the voltage will drop like from 8 kilovolt to 7.5 or 7 kilovolts. Okay. That's about electric fence chargers. Maybe we can still see a couple of sparks in the last thing. Ah, I, I would have to rewire it. So the sparks here are much more intense than on these. Um, oh, by the way, transformers in a fence charger, in a fence charger, could in a fence charger could be that big. 
So that was my short video about electric fence chargers. Best regards, Stefan.